I live in Royal Oak, Michigan. I grew up uh, in an athletic family. My sport of choice was figure skating and grew up uh, pretty much most of my life in an ice arena. Still, to this day, 57 years later, it brings me peace. That's it. It's freedom. It's freedom. Yeah. And as long as my body still moves, I will still skate. My name is Lynn Bishop, and I have systemic scleroderma. So most patients, the cardinal feature of scleroderma is skin thickening. Um, but the fibrosis can affect internal organs as well, the lungs being the most common and why patients die from scleroderma. I woke up one day with shortness of breath, went to bed feeling fine and woke up the next day feeling terrible. Thought I might have had a cold or something like that. My family doctor diagnosed me with bronchitis and started a round of antibiotics and uh, steroids. And this went on for uh, three rounds with still no improvement. I was in tremendous pain, felt overall exhausted, tired. Uh, I had a lot of uh, coughing, runny nose, and, and just miserable to say the least. So interstitial lung disease is an umbrella terminology for diseases that cause scarring in the lung in the interstitium. When I describe this to a patient, I say the lungs are made up of airways and air sacs and blood vessels. And the stuff that holds everything together is called the interstitium. When that gets inflamed and scarred, that's interstitial lung disease. So it's harder for patients to get air in. And that's when the very first symptoms happen. The physician can often hear some noises in the lungs. A lot of times they're described as Velcro crackles. So if you can think of the sound Velcro makes when you rip it apart, that's what we're hearing with our stethoscope. Sometimes we can find some kind of enlargement and curvature of the fingernails that's called clubbing. I had such pain in my hands and my feet and swelling and my joints ached and uh, it didn't really go along with the diagnosis of interstitial lung disease and I kept wondering what else was wrong. She presented to me for a second opinion for her interstitial lung disease and it was clear when I examined her that she had features of scleroderma um, as the root cause for her interstitial lung disease. The kind that I have is the diffuse scleroderma which attacks the internal organs. So this is the CT scan for Lynn. The upper parts of her lung are completely normal. They're dark, we can see these little white lines, they're blood vessels. As we scroll lower, we start to see evidence of her interstitial lung disease. It's peripheral, it gets worse as we go to the lower lobes. This white or gray haziness, we can describe that with words like ground glass opacities. As we go lower, um, her disease gets worse. As we go lower, we can also see evidence of a dilated esophagus, which is in keeping with esophageal involvement that's so common with scleroderma and scleroderma-associated interstitial lung disease.
the symptoms overlap a lot of other conditions, I'm told, and so that's why it's hard to diagnose this besides it being a rare disease. Early when the skin is starting to thicken in scleroderma, patients may describe that their fingers feel puffy. They'll notice that their rings don't fit as well as normal or they can't quite make a fist with their fingers. Another early symptom is esophageal involvement where they may notice really severe gastroesophageal reflux symptoms. So we believe that scleroderma is related to a trigger in someone that is probably has some genetic susceptibility. Exposure to silica is a risk factor, as well as aromatic hydrocarbons, so kind of solvents, um, can be a risk factor for scleroderma. No risk factors, and just to wake up one day with this you know, diagnosis was, was really tough. When you're given a diagnosis of two to five years to live, it's a little hard to try and uh, go on with your daily life pretending everything's fine. Have a good day. I think the hardest part for me was that there was nothing they could do. Up until recently, there was no FDA-approved therapies for scleroderma. Fortunately, we now have therapies to treat both the interstitial lung disease and the pulmonary hypertension, which are showing um, improved survival curves and offering a lot of hope for our scleroderma patients. I think I'm all set right now. Yeah, thank you, though. As Dr. Hyland told me all about scleroderma and the lung disease, I proudly said to her, yes, but I'll be at the top of the list for a lung transplant. And she said to me, um, no, scleroderma knocks you down to the bottom. It's tough to, so to do it too. tell I your daughter so <laughs> that you have this disease yeah. with no cure and no treatment. One of uh, our favorite quotes is, the devil whispered in my ear, you're not strong enough to withstand the storm. Today I answered back, I am the storm. For my birthday last year, my daughter said, I, I have a great gift for you. And uh, she handed me a little box that had a necklace in it that says, I am the storm. And then she rolled up her sleeve and on her forearm, she had tattooed, I am the storm. And she said to me, every day I look at this mom I know how strong you are. Greatest gift, right? So if that's not motivation to uh, continue being the storm, I don't know what it is. I remember praying after getting this diagnosis that they would find a cure or help. With scleroderma and with interstitial lung disease as a group of diseases, we have not been able to move science forward without patients volunteering to participate in clinical trials. After being a patient with Dr. Hyland for uh, about three or four months, she offered me an opportunity to get into a clinical trial for a drug for interstitial lung disease. At that point, I thought, okay, great, I, I, I'll do anything. I'll try anything. As the drug, I think, started working, uh, I, I had more hope.
So now I've been there uh, three and a half years uh, as Dr. Hyland's patient, and obviously grateful, indebted uh, for her knowledge um, because it's changed my life. We are finally moving the needle forward, that there's a lot of hope that for interstitial lung disease, no matter what the cause is. And I look forward to exploring those new therapies with my patients down the road. I don't fear the future. I look forward to it. I, I, I want to live a full life. I have a big bucket list that I want to accomplish. I have hope now of what's to come with this condition and the possibilities out there. Fear, fear's not part of it. No, I, I have a lot of faith and a, a lot of belief that things will get better. I'd be happy to be the first patient to beat this disease. I really would.